guys, what's up? It's Biff from Fearless Mods. So today we're going to jump into the STI and hopefully figure out what's going on in a couple of areas. Number one, you saw that we had a little issue at the track that um, caused the intercooler to, to be bent upward and then be able to get underneath and start to pull off the wheels and look at that suspension. Bottom line is, at the end of this episode, we're going to have some Fortunato coilovers installed on this STI, give it a whole new stance, a whole new feel, a whole new drivability, and hopefully get rid of those clunks. So stay tuned. washed now first thing I want to do is get in here and check out what's going on under that intercooler and then we will go ahead and uh, I'll probably check and see if there's any um, obvious damage to the engine mounts and uh, then it's time to pull off the wheels and get those Fortunato coilovers on so this is bizarre as I checked out the uh, the engine subsequently to the uh, day at the track um, I was still able to build full boost so I was kind of not real positive that there was going to be anything obvious underneath that had blown that caused this to, to be crooked. The Y pipe's still in good shape. Uh, the hoses all look to be good. The clamps were all tight. Maybe it's the whole engine. The engine does appear to have a little bit of a slope to it. The intake is definitely lower on this side than it is on this side. So I'm thinking that uh, Perhaps this engine mount over here is what I need to look at. Maybe this. Maybe this came up, the, uh, the air pump hit up here. Looks like there's been some contact. Maybe it's been hitting here, and, and I hit it so hard on the track trying to launch that it hit the front of the hood and popped that, uh, that little intake um, molding around there. So I'm going to go ahead and start tearing into the uh, wheels so that we can get these Fortunato coilovers on here. And then as I'm in there and I have that opened up a little bit more and I have it on jacks, I'll go ahead and take a look under there and see how that engine mount looks. I'm me in 10 minutes. I'm, I'm the, and you're gonna have the loan that you need within 10 minutes. You're gonna be able to afford it. And then, <laughs> and then the next guy comes in and he's like, I'm me in, in an hour from now. And then I'm me 10 years from now. what I miss? Anyway, this is me in the past opening up this awesome, Fortunato, I can't even tell you what they are, dude. That's so sad. I ordered them so long. Coilovers ago. are. Yeah, <laughs> they're the 500 series Gen 7 coilovers, and they hand built for me. Took about three weeks to get them, and Fortunato hooked me up with a great semi sponsorship, whatever you want to call it. But I'm super excited to get these on the car. Oh, dude, with my certificate of assembly and it's going to be so sweet and i know the ride on these is just freaking phenomenal beautiful that you can uh freaking do whatever you wanted to this you could always replace this with an airbag cap mm. or any of the things and upgrade these things fully upgradable look at those nuts so to speak yeah those are way Maybe. way nicer than mine mine are all eaten up surely these won't rust ever yeah no definitely right? not yeah Pretty cool. Thank you, Fortunato. We'll continue to hook you up in this video. So before I do this, one thing I want to do is go ahead and measure the uh, the ride height, measure the fender height on these, so I have a uh, baseline to go with whenever I um, put the other coilovers on. Okay, 26 and a quarter. So this thing's pretty square all the way around. It's about 26 and a uh, 26 and a quarter, 26 and three eighths, um, all the way around. So that's a good baseline. I'll go ahead and break these loose and we'll pull these uh, tires up, off, get it on the jacks. Not in that order. A couple of uh, 19s here. Top one has some markings on the back of it here. For camber angle, you can see the markings. I'll go ahead and mark that before I break it loose. And this side, therefore there might be uh, a little bit of a lobe in there. You can see some something in there that might have to do with being able to adjust the camber there. So I'm going to take the uh, top and, uh, and bottom bolts off right here. 
on these two I've got a this is pretty easy it looks like I can just pull this off this little retainer here undo the brake line here without totally undoing it hopefully it's just a holder here so I can drop that and just slide it down um, and then that'll be everything on the bottom and then I'll go up to the top and get the uh, the bolts on the cap washer goes on the top one all right that's both those bolts out that's dropping away let me go ahead and get if I can get these off this thing wants to drop down so I'm just gonna hold it with my left hand while I loosen these up they come off pretty easy once you break them loose here's the coil overs again you've seen them those are the rear ones and these are the fronts so the first thing I notice pulling these things out of the box is how well made they are um, it's all kind of like a green anodized aluminum uh, a lot of these uh, aluminum components and they just look to be superior high quality I don't uh, foresee any issues with them uh, rusting or anything like that um, they do say that they coat the threads with a uh, lubricant to keep stuff from sticking to it so I'm just gonna go with that and um, you know as long as you keep them uh, clean from time to time it should help keep uh, build up from from gathering on there that that makes it hard to adjust them in the future and I'm gonna check out the manual here real quick first it's uh, interesting to note that uh, there's a lot of warnings and cautions in the in the user's manual here such as this is for off-road use only and shouldn't be used on the highways sorry about that yet I had it adjusted uh, by them for good drivability uh, good trade-off because I will be uh, driving it as continuing to drive it as a daily but uh, with an occasional straight track and, and road course um, usage but but primarily daily so they went with an 8k 8k setup front and rear um, and that should give a good drivability if you look at uh, T-Rex his video where he installed the, the Gen 6 uh, 500 series coilovers from Fortunato uh, that was that was the same setup that they gave him they have the radial bearing mounts and uh, everything else remains the same. First thing I'm going to do is loosen up this uh, this top one. Measure the the length of the spring here. Uh, should be six inches, seven. This is a seven inch spring, and it should have a quarter of an inch of preload. So I'm going to loosen it. Make sure it's a seven inch spring, and then reset the uh, the preload. Okay, so it is definitely a seven inch spring exactly. So now I'm going to tighten it back down to six and three quarters inch so I have the proper preload. So now what I'm going to do is uh, just go ahead and lock this locking collar. There's a uh, Allen head screw in there to go ahead and tighten it down. I'm going to go ahead now and just kind of see what we got. There. I'm going to go from, let's say, the middle of that hole. So it's 16 inches from the top surface. 16 inches from the top surface of this to the middle of that first bolt hole for that ride and, and that's not ride height that's unsprung height and this one is 14 so right away you've already got um, more compression than the factory setting and because I was at uh, 26 and a quarter I'm going to go ahead and just try to put these on at the at the current setting and see how that that goes so we'll call that 14 inches so that I can be consistent actually the better measurement I'm going to do is going to be between these collars down here so that I can be consistent between left and right all right so it is uh, three and one eighth inch from the bottom of that collar to the bottom of this collar so that's what I'm going to use as my as my better measurement since this pivots around at the top that should be good for our initial setting let's go ahead and get this first one put in there and see what it looks like There actually is a left and a right on these, and they're not marked. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this one to three and one eighths inch and put it on this side because this is where the brake line goes on the back and that clip goes on the front. And right now those are reversed over here. So that's clearly the one for the other side. Second thing I'm gonna show you is with the, uh, with the three mounts, it is important that you get them in there correctly otherwise you can't adjust the camber 
in and out. These two are gonna go towards the firewall so that this one stays over to the, to the front of the car and that lines this up so that it can slide in and out and do the camber properly. So the Fortunato goes against the, uh, the firewall essentially. All right, now that that's in there, I can rotate the bottom around uh, at the pivot point up here at the cap so that I'm lined up to hook up the suspension. So already that's looking much better. Uh, and I'm just gonna rotate the entire thing around to here. So I haven't messed with this adjustment at all. Now this is where I can go ahead and bring everything up and then I'll worry about getting these clips on. And you can kind of see here how this bolt does have um, somewhat of a, uh, a cam lobe to it. So it's higher on top there so that when you rotate it, that cam lobe moves around and it changes your, your uh, camber. Washer goes on the top one. All right, we're set up. I think I'm gonna use the jack to help me out here. And before I do that, I'm gonna check a few things. I'm not seeing anything that should be loose and clunking down here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. This is great news. I gotta show you this because this is something that has been plaguing me. Lower ball joint is my culprit for some of the clunking. All right, this is gonna be hard to see. I don't know if you can see it back here because I don't have the wheels turned, but um, as I raise up on this, I can hear it and I can feel it and I can see the movement down here in this lower ball joint. So I got a little vertical play. It's interesting that with this all bolted up, when I would do that, I couldn't feel it. Everything else seems nice and solid. So let's put this baby in and, and then we can take off that ball joint. So that looks good. I'll go ahead and get the uh, brake line and the other little uh, bracket on there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave those off for right now because um, when it comes time to adjust this, I'm gonna to have to be spinning this whole lower half. So let's leave that there for now. It doesn't move at all now. So I just had to have it undone there to be able to tell that that lower ball joint was bad. That's still tall though. Okay, so that's still at least two finger widths. But I think first I wanna go and get the other side on so that it sets level as I'm adjusting both sides, not just do one side and have it at an angle. All right, so there's our three and an eighth. We're lined up. I'm gonna get a jack under here to help me raise it and I'm gonna check that ball joint again on this side. That's on there. Ball joint's good on this side. Wheel on here and lower it and check out the overall height. And we've dropped it a quarter inch. So those look like about an inch of clearance there. I'm gonna bring it down another half inch and see what it does. These are factory wheels. Might try three quarters. Let me see what that does. Three and one eighth. I'm gonna go down to three and or two and three eighths. Front of the engine, oil filter, looking back, right? So that left side, here's the motor mount. Look at that. Completely pulled up out of the hole, missing the nut and sitting up on top. So just like I thought, it uh, that bolt, who knows how long that's been off and that that's been a lot of my clunking around. It's interesting, you can also see the flywheel, it's bare. I would think there would be a cover on that. Anybody know anything about that? Comment below if so. But here's what a motor mount should look like, nice and flush with a good bolt on there. So we're gonna see if we can get uh, something under here and jack this engine up and get it to come back over into those bolt holes, or into that bolt hole, and uh, go to the parts store and get that ball joint and see if I can get a nut for that as well. Okay, so I just used this big bar here, jacked it up, and got between the frame and the exhaust mount, kind of pried on it like this. 
until I got it lined up and then let the jack down. So now the bolt's back down through there. A little chewed up on the back side there where, the, where it was sliding up and down, but I'm hopeful that uh, I can put a nut on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this nut off of uh, this side now and take that to the hardware store. They don't have the ball joint uh, in stock, so I ordered one of those that'll be here next week. I'll be able to slap that on, no problem. Found another uh, M10 with a 1.25 thread pitch and washer that I can use on the other side. And then I ran a tap down through here to clean it out. What I'm gonna do now is run a die up over the, the stud that's sticking out through the motor mount and see if I can clean that up a little bit. Run those down, tighten them all up, and we'll be good to go on having an engine that's level again and an inner clue that's not trying to pop through the uh, through the hood. Three quarters of an inch lower, let's get this put back together now that we got that problem fixed. Ooh, I like that. So that's one finger width there. Of course, it is still catty corner from the other side, but that looks good. See what we got here so that's about 24 and three quarters so that's an inch and a half drop from 26 and a quarter and I like that look for now for the front so let's uh, I need to go ahead and take these off one more time so I can tighten up that collar and attach the uh, the remaining little pieces in there and then we'll flip around and do the back that front looks a little bit tucked it looks nice this one's gonna be a little different than the last one um, maybe a little bit harder so you got these uh, lower control arms here so I'm gonna have to remove this bolt to remove the uh, the shock and then that bolt there for the sway arm and then hopefully I can uh, this will drop down enough that I can pull it out um, I will have to get into the trunk here and pull out the carpet so that I can expose all of this so that's what I'm gonna do now be right underneath here and since they're not adjustable and there's only two bolts I'm just going to get in there with a uh, a ratchet wrench and just take them off like that so I don't have to pull off all the side panels should be 12s just like everything else I spoke too soon oh my gosh are they 14s okay, I'm hoping third time's a charm with 14 millimeter yes Unlike the front, I can't reach under the wheel well and get in here at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these while it's still connected on the bottom. That way they don't just fall out. And then I can go to the outside and, and work on pulling them out. Okay, let's see if these are once again 19s. I'm gonna try 17 and a 15. Okay, 17 on the strut and 14. Everything's just a little bit different on the back. So the, the other ones were 16 and a half inches from the flange to the center of the hole down here. Um, I've set these at 14 and a half, which is a full two inches shorter, um, but that's because we've seen with the other ones that the compression of those old shocks is a lot uh, less stiff than these. And so therefore I'm, I'm going ahead and just getting ahead of it with an extra half inch adjustment. Um, and then I'll work from there. And that gives me uh, one and three, one and three quarters from the bottom of each one of those flanges. So let's go ahead and get this stuffed in there. All right, so the tops are started. Now I can go ahead and get this bottom in here. I'll tighten the two nuts up top and then it'll be time to put the wheel on and see how the how it sits. Yeah, that's still about two fingers high on that one. 26. Yeah, on this one, because it's a little harder to get in there and take it out real quick, what I've done is I just set this where I wanted it and I'm gonna see if I can rotate this top piece. It may be hard, let's see. All right, 
six and seven eighths, so that's good. I just gotta, that's just gonna move while I do this. It's the only, there's no two ways about it. That or I take this back out and spin it. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Seriously. That is a pain in the ass. We I mean, don't like that. That's better. Up to 25 and a quarter. It has been a brutally hot freaking day. And, uh, but the job's done. And I hope you enjoyed watching this install of the Fortunato um, 500 series Gen 7 coilovers. Man, this baby is slammed. Look at that stance. I love the front, because I gotta daily drive it. Uh, the back is a little too low for me. Um, your eyes are probably watering, but that's tucked. So I'm gonna have to uh, raise that up, but not tonight. I need uh, hydration and rest. But that looks really sweet. I love how those turned out. And it's totally gonna change up the way the car looks and drives. So we will have to see when I can get to uh, fixing it back up and getting, it, uh, getting the rear end raised up, probably about a half inch or so, half to three quarters. I'll have to look at it. I want it to be a match about the front. It's probably going to be about three quarters of an inch on the rear to re raise that back up. I had it there initially, but just in the, the way you jack one side up and not the other, and it was compressing one side more, and so I thought I needed to let it down more, and I, I let it down about three quarters of an inch from where I thought I wanted it, and it shows. So I'm going to have to go in there and do that. And those rears are much harder than the fronts. Eh. Don't know why, shouldn't be that way. But also we went ahead and got the motor mount fixed. So now the intercooler's in, the motor mount's uh, in there, it's bolted up good. And I know that I've got a lower right ball joint that is, uh, that's bad, so that's on order. Um, probably will fix that about the same time I raise the back end back up. But uh, I tell you what, thank you to the Fortunato guys for uh, hooking us up on a good deal on those Series 500 coilovers. Um, check them out man these things are custom made for each car it takes about four weeks to get them and you tell them what you want and they get you um, just right for your setup and you tell them what you're going to do with it you're going to street it you're going to track it you're going to um, you know road course it and they will hook them up just the way you want them so um, man huge huge shout out and thanks they'll be linked down below check them out and uh, i don't have a discount code maybe when we do a drivability uh, video here later. Maybe we'll have a code that we can, can toss you, but uh, uh, it's it's freaking low. I'm going to have to be careful. I'm going to be dragging speed bumps with this thing. That's going to be a wrap for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you're ready to go out there and, and slam your STI with some nice fortune out of coilovers. Please let them know that Biff from Fearless Mod sent you. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you soon.